Thomas Ma appeared to be just another ordinary dad who happened to run a successful haulage company. He lived in a modest home on Wiltshire Close in Warrington, where flash cars including a Range Rover and a Corvette lined the driveway. Inside the home, he owned Hublot and Rolex watches valued at hundreds of thousands of pounds, artwork and a world map made from bullets. The huge wealth on show far surpassed the earnings declared by Ma, igniting a national crime agency investigation that would eventually expose him as a linchpin of the underworld. This is the incredible story about a man who went under the radar of law enforcement for over 20 years. His downfall was only triggered when police began to investigate a completely unrelated case. You are watching OCG TV. We would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, like the video or leave a comment. Your support allows us to produce more content for our audience to enjoy. Chapter 1 the Haulier. A story starts in the spring of 2020. Thomas Ma, a wealthy drug trafficker, appears to be quite calm despite the impact of the pandemic. From his residence in the northern region of England, he sends a message to a friend, stating that he has been involved in this illicit trade for over two decades, emphasising that he is not a newcomer and is well versed in the strategies employed. Although Ma was born and raised in Ireland, he believes that his criminal enterprise will withstand the challenges posed by COVID-19. He sends another text expressing his confidence using the phrase, We be grand, mate, in reference to a quote from Johnny Logan, who won the Eurovision Song Contest for Ireland in 1980. Little did Logan know that his sentimental ballad would find its way into clandestine conversations about drug transactions. In response, Ma's friend, with less than perfect grammar, eagerly expresses their desire for the end of the lockdown, stating that they can't wait to escape the current situation. Mark and Kurz agreeing that it is desperately needed at this point. Then he proceeds to utilise simple code to depict drug runs from Europe to Ireland. Workwise taxiways, meaning drug runs, are working out OK at the minute with this individual from flat, meaning the Netherlands, to ours, meaning Ireland. Once we get this travel ban lifted, mate, we be on the pig's back. On the pig's back is an Irish expression indicating a prosperous time. Ma further states, It's just going to take time, pal. We will be laughing. I'm telling you, that's why I'm not stressing yet. There was an additional reason why Ma wasn't stressing. He was utilising an EncroChat phone, a sophisticated encrypted device that had rapidly gained popularity among organised crime groups and their associates. These phones were disguised as regular Android devices, but most of the standard features were disabled. Instead, by pressing a secret combination of buttons, the user could access a hidden phone within the phone, a software system known as EncroChat. This software could only be used to send text and picture messages, and solely to other EncroChat users. Each device has its own EncroChat handle or nickname. Mars was satirical, so that users may not even be aware of each other's true identities. It created an anonymous virtual den of thieves, one that was believed to be impenetrable. Ma presented himself as a road haulier, operating trucks registered in Bulgaria to bypass strict UK regulations. However, beneath this facade, he played a more sinister role as a facilitator for organised crime syndicates. His involvement included arranging transportation for drug shipments and engaging in money laundering activities. The drugs would enter Ireland through the UK, while the illicit funds would flow out. This illicit trade was fraught with danger, with suspicions arising that some of Ma's associates were linked to multiple murders. To ensure the safety of himself and his family, Ma relocated from Ireland to the northwest of England, earning the moniker The Man in Liverpool among his criminal contacts. Despite his criminal activities, Ma maintained a seemingly normal life, residing in a modest three-bedroom house in Warrington, Cheshire, while his wife operated a beauty salon called New Hair Don't Care. Privately, however, Ma indulged in the fruits of his criminal endeavours. He possessed an array of luxury possessions, including multiple high-end vehicles, valuable artwork and a collection of expensive watches. Notably, four luxury watches worth an estimated £100,000 each remain unrecovered. 
Additionally, Ma spared no expense when it came to extravagant holidays, treating himself to first-class trips to Mexico and private helicopter rides over Manhattan, spending exorbitant amounts of money in the process. He possessed a second residence in Spain, where he maintained a Porsche Cayenne and indulged in a luxurious lifestyle. However, his fortune took a turn for the worse. Having survived a stroke at the age of 23, he also suffered from a rare congenital heart condition and was burdened by various other ailments, including plantar fasciitis, a painful foot condition that often hindered his ability to walk. In 2019, his luck began to dwindle. He had sold a truck to an Irish criminal named Rowan Hughes, who used it to transport a trailer full of Vietnamese migrants from Europe to the UK. On October 22, 2019, the truck, driven by a young Irishman named Morris Robinson, stopped outside Perfleet Port in Essex. Upon opening the doors, Robinson discovered that all the migrants had tragically suffocated. Both Robinson and Hughes later pleaded guilty to 39 counts of manslaughter. To the surprise of Ma, it was revealed that the truck was still registered under his name. Consequently, the NCA, National Crime Agency, approached him. Although investigators confirmed his innocence in the migrant conspiracy, they gradually uncovered his involvement in criminal activities and embarked on disrupting his operations and seizing his assets. Despite the mounting pressure from law enforcement, Ma remained confident in the security of his EncroChat phone. Little did he know that investigators were on the verge of intercepting his communications. Even as they targeted Ma and confiscated his properties, he continued to use his EncroChat device to solicit, plan and coordinate new ventures involving drug trade and money laundering. He firmly believed that his phone was impervious to decryption. However, unbeknownst to him, the NCA was about to gain access to his conversations. Chapter 2 Project Venetic In late 2019, Project Venetic was initiated by the NCA with the aim of targeting EncroChat and its users in the UK. However, this endeavour posed significant technical difficulties, resulting in slow progress. Nevertheless, the NCA was not the sole law enforcement agency in Western Europe interested in EncroChat. Around the same time, an investigation led by the Lille Regional Court in France discovered EncroChat servers located in Roubaix, near the Belgian border. Although the French investigators never publicly disclosed the exact hosts of these servers, they were able to obtain images of the hardware used by the EncroChat system. During their investigation, the French authorities uncovered details about Ma's drug trafficking operation. Ma relied on concealed compartments, known as hides or slots, in lorries to hide substantial amounts of Class A drugs, typically 97% pure cocaine. These hiding spots could be found in various places such as toolboxes, spare tyres or behind the illuminating glass panel above the windscreen. In one specific transaction, Ma used his phone to arrange a deal involving 10 kilograms of cocaine. The plan was for the drugs to be delivered to a lorry driver in the Netherlands who would then transport them to the UK and eventually Ireland. On April 4, 2020, Ma sent a message stating, Hello mate, taxi tomorrow morning or early Saturday evening in the flat, the Netherlands, to our place, Ireland. Can take 10 bits in the stash, 2,700 euros each part, would 10 be okay? The response received was, Okay mate, what part of the flat is the drop, he won't do service stations. Ma replied, That's okay, we can pick a place near Utrecht or near Rotterdam, he won't have to wait long. The drugs were delivered to the HGV driver in Holland by a courier driving a silver Hyundai. The exchange took place in a lay-by along a regular haulage route. Ma was later informed of the lorry's journey across the UK to Ireland, where his associate collected the drugs by identifying the correct lorry through a name displayed in the window. The messages also revealed Ma's fees, which could amount to €4,000 for a typical drug transaction. Officers monitoring Ma grew concerned when he switched to using EncroChat handsets, suspecting that he had become aware of his messages being intercepted. His new phone, nicknamed Snacker, came into play. However, Ma confessed in his messages that he had lost his temper and hurled his old phone, known as Satirical, at one of his children, resulting in its breakage. Despite engaging in discussions about drug transactions and money laundering on the phone, Ma still took precautions. 
The police believe that he would hide the phone outside his residence every night when it was not in use, and he employed slang as a code when discussing deals and arrangements. Terms like tops or posh referred to cocaine, bobs indicated heroin, poly stood for ecstasy, and jackets represented cannabis. Additionally, Ma occasionally discussed weapons using terms like apples or pineapples to refer to grenades. In the meantime, Ma did not forget about Ronan Hughes, the smuggler who had failed to register the truck he had purchased from Ma, ultimately drawing police attention to him. Hughes had gone on the run following the tragic deaths of migrants in the lorry and was finally apprehended in April 2020. From his messages, the NCA quickly discovered that Ma was fixated on Hughes. He mentions to an associate, Have you seen that guy? He's the one who bought the car. When asked if Hughes had any incriminating evidence against him, Ma responded, Just rumours, mate. I'll find out if they arrest me again in the next few weeks. Haha. <laughs> I'll shower every night and wear clean underwear before bed just in case. Haha. <laughs> it might be a few days without a shower, but it won't stop me. However, Ma was cautioned to be cautious of the NCA, as he said, Those idiots from the UK, they'll follow you to the ends of the earth. Hughes continued to occupy Ma's thoughts. The following day, he sent a message asking if anyone knew someone in a specific prison. One of his contacts replied, I'll ask, what's going on? Ma responded, I want someone to take care of a guy I know. He was asked, do you mean hurt him? Yes, Ma replied. Thanks mate, I don't want him gone, just hurt. Let me know what you think. The police suspected that Ma didn't want Hughes to be killed but only injured. Ma later disputed that these messages implied any intention to cause harm. The text conversation continued, with Ma being assured that his request would be taken care of. He was asked if he wanted Hughes to know who was behind it. Yeah, Ma replied. They're dragging me into this mess. The NCA interpreted these messages as a threat to Hughes' life and took steps to protect him. Ma grew increasingly anxious about the NCA, and investigators observed him discussing plans for his own escape. According to his messages, he believed he could flee without a passport by hiding in a truck and travelling to mainland Europe. He planned to obtain travel documents in Spain and then go to a country without an extradition agreement with the UK. There was even a moment when Ma was ready to leave, but the plan was postponed because his plantar fasciitis made it too painful for him to walk to the vehicle. The revelation of the French hack unfolded in a significant manner. On June 13, 2020, approximately 10 weeks after the commencement of eavesdropping, EncroChat transmitted a message to its entire user base. The message stated, Today, we had our domain seized illegally by government entities. Due to the advanced nature of the attack and the presence of malicious software, we can no longer ensure the security of your device. In response, we have taken immediate action by disabling connectivity to counter the attack. It is strongly advised that you power off your device and dispose of it physically without delay. Upon receiving the EncroChat alert, the NCA swiftly mobilized all available resources. Recognizing Ma as a potential flight risk, their primary objective was to apprehend him as soon as possible. This would increase the likelihood of seizing his EncroChat phone. In the afternoon, when the police finally reached Ma's residence, he was still present, adhering to the lockdown measures. However, his phone had mysteriously vanished. Chapter 3 A Very Different Life Despite the fact that Ma's EncroChat phone was never found by the NCA, investigators had already obtained weeks' worth of data from it. This data included numerous photographs of his deteriorating feet and other images from inside his home, leaving no doubt that he had sent the messages himself. During police interviews, Ma chose not to provide any comment. However, due to the incriminating phone messages, he was charged with two counts of drug importation and two counts of money laundering. Ma pleaded guilty and attended an online hearing for his sentencing at Liverpool Crown Court three days before Christmas. Having lost weight during his time in custody, he sat quietly as his fate was determined. It was observed that he was among the first individuals involved in EncroChat cases to admit to his offences, and one of the first to be sentenced. The judge emphasised that drugs cause desperation and misery, and are a cancer in our midst. However, individuals like Ma disregard this as long as there is profit to be made. 
He had played a significant role in a highly professional and sophisticated operation, resulting in a sentence of 14 years and 8 months in prison. A separate charge of conspiring to commit grievous bodily harm against Ronan Hughes was not pursued, as it was left on file. This indicates that the police suspect Marr of the alleged offence, but he disputed the charge and the case did not proceed to trial. Marr became the first prominent criminal figure to be imprisoned as a consequence of the EncroChat intelligence. Subsequent convictions have already followed. In the weeks following June 13, law enforcement agencies and NCA officers nationwide made over 1,500 arrests related to EncroChat, and numerous trials for serious offences are currently underway. In addition to the arrests, the EncroChat hack has resulted in the seizure of 115 firearms, over 5,000 kilograms of Class A drugs, and 56 million pounds of criminal proceeds, according to the police. In some cases, proving who used an EncroChat phone is more difficult to establish than with Ma. So difficult that in at least one case, charges were dropped. There have also been arguments over the admissibility of hacked EncroChat messages as evidence in court. Like Thomas Ma, many of those convicted will lose not just their liberty and comfortable lifestyles, but their ill-found wealth, which can be seized as the proceeds of crime. The NCA had considered charging Ma's wife too, but ultimately decided against it. She remains innocent. But as the police said, she would lose her home and most of the assets she and Ma had enjoyed. The luxurious life that she had known with him is over too.